Okay. So we get a different signal. Uh, how to understand various signal? How does this experimental parameters affect those different signal? And what kind of detectors we have? And what kind of signal we get? And how to control those signal to get a best possible image uh, for a given sample? That is what we are going to do. Today's uh, class will try to concentrate two important imaging mode. One is a secondary electron imaging mode. Another one is a backscatter electron imaging mode. Let me share the screen now. Yes. Can you see the screen now? Yes, sir. Okay. So what we have seen yesterday, uh, uh, one thing is that uh, we have a sample. This is your sample. So electron beam come and it interact. Then we create a interaction volume. And we have seen at a different different level. You have a different kind of uh, you get OJ spectroscopy. Then uh, we said it's a secondary electron. Uh, today's class we'll see why we are having such a uh, different uh, depth level we are getting and. Uh, 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 then again, uh, the cross sections are varying uh, depending on the different signal. Then we said it's a characteristic X-ray. Then we get a backscatter electrons. So these are these signals that we got. So there are two different things that we should need to understand is uh, when metal I means uh, sample and electron interact, there are two possibility. One is actually elastic scattering. Another one is inelastic scattering. So let me brief about uh, what is elastic scattering and what is inelastic scattering. Suppose this is your incoming electron. Okay. So this is your sample. In this sample, you have atom. Okay. So when you have this um, electron beam comes, because of this positive nucleus, it attracts and again now uh, this electron actually without losing any appreciable loss, it can actually change the direction. Okay, so this kind of structuring is possible, but this probability is low, but this is possible. Uh, that scattering we call elastic scattering. So mainly when we talk about backscattered electron, this is of this elastic scattering in nature. So that means uh, uh, backscattered electron are basically the incident electron. Okay. Suppose same electron, let's say now you have a so much, you have a nucleus, then you have electrons in the orbital. Okay. Now, uh, instead of just coming and bending, suppose this electron, let's say that you have this electron, if it actually knock off this lack of this sample electron. Okay. So while knocking off, let's say you have certain kinetic energy. Okay. Now, uh, let's say that you can have kinetic energy Ke one okay so now what happened is actually this you have incoming electron which is knock up knocking up it can be a uh, maybe outer cell electron or it can be a inner cell electron the probabilities are everything 
so you can uh, it can knock off any electron let's assume that it prop means you are actually somewhere in the middle you are knocking up one of the electron in the uh, in the uh, sample so if we do that now you look at this this incoming electron let's say this is your incoming electron now this incoming electron you measure the kinetic energy let's say this is ke2 so what is going to happen is this ke1 may be higher than significantly higher than ke2 that means your the electron lost its kinetic energy because of this knocking process I means some amount of energy it has given uh, spent for the knocking of this electron but this is actually proportional to the uh, uh, where from which electron let's suppose if it knocks off let's say if it comes and it knocks off you lose some energy uh, this energy and suppose if it knocks off this uh, inner cell electron then it is going to have a different value okay so that part we will discuss in detail in the okay but kinetic energy and other stuff that we will discuss but what is the fundamental we try to understand is appreciable loss of energy it is associated in this process that means you are you are you are talking about a inelastic scattering okay uh, uh that means uh, incoming electron losing some amount of significant amount of energy in during the inelastic scattering this process actually is useful for so scattering of electron is useful for is it clear now is it visible yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. okay so have you seen all those things uh, before uh, you lose connection no sir hmm? no sir no. no so up to what point uh, uh i could actually you could understand so kinetic energy loss uh, because of the electron that part i have discussed sir i think before uh, ebst analysis with structure okay okay this other part inelastic scattering part I have completed okay this part is fine no sir uh, in elastic scattering uh, just we move on to that and uh, connection was lost okay just a minute let me remove everything then Okay, now now uh, we have discussed earlier. I mean, soft kinetic energy that I discussed. So the incoming electron, if it doesn't lose any kinetic energy just by direction change, uh, I'll take this is a kinetic energy one and this is a kinetic energy two. Uh, the kinetic energy of Ke one almost closer to Ke two. This is what we call inelastic scattering, where you get only the direction change. You lose some amount of energy, but it, it may not be significant. so this signal we generally use it in the back scattered electron okay suppose if you have electron let's say that you have electron in this cell you have electron in this cell you have electrons in this cell and you also have electron in this cell you have electron in this cell and you have electron in this cell okay now suppose you have a incident beam if it is knocking off the outer cell electron let's say that if it is knocking off to start with ke1 then this is coming out let's say this is ke2 this is actually your incoming electron this is actually the it is a sample electron this electron is actually a sample electron okay so now you can see that uh, you lose let's say ke1 would be more than ke2 uh because you lost some amount of energy of this 
incoming electron because of this uh, uh, in the because of the process what we are doing is we are knocking up the electron so that process we call inelastic scattering but again it depends on which electron it knocks up it can knock if it is knocking up the outer cell electron then the difference would be lower in case suppose the electron if it knocks up okay so then you are going to see a let's say this is ke 3 we talk about so in that case ke 3 must be ke 2 can be larger than ke 3 this is also outcoming electron this is also outcoming i mean this is also income incident electron this is also incident electron but now you see this uh, ke 2 could be larger than ke 3 uh, because you are losing very small amount of energy because you are knocking up the outer cell electron on the other hand if you knock up this center means you are close to the nucleus you are going to lo lose significant amount of energy but this process if this electron comes out if we can detect it we call this is secondary electron we'll discuss little bit detail in the next few slides okay okay so if it knocks up the Uh, uh the electron which is in the inner cell if uh, that electron if it comes out of the sample then we talk about this is actually a secondary electron because of this let's say that if you continue this process okay so now this portion is packed now this electron we move from the uh, the the let's say this is a k orbital this is uh, l cell k shell and l cell suppose Uh, the, you have a vacancy in the k cell. This atom means this electron moves from k to l to k. In that case, you start seeing a x ray. So that is what we are going to use in a EDS analysis. So the inel inelastic scattering can give you a secondary electron. This we call SC. This is actually the very important imaging process in the SCM. okay uh because of this knocking of the inner cell electron you have vacancy in the um, uh, inner most cell uh, to to minimize the total energy of the system one electron from the l cell can move to k cell then you start getting a x ray generated because of the energy difference so that we'll discuss in detail about uh, when we go up, uh, uh, this particular concept in x ray diffraction okay what is characteristic x ray what is continuous x ray why do we have all this uh, fundamental concept that we will discuss in detail so this generated x rays that is we use in a energy dispersive spectroscopy it's one of the very important chemical analysis tool okay in addition to that this inelastic scattering can give you the atomic uh, uh, oj uh, electrons also uh, so those electron Uh, means you can you cannot detecting uh, you cannot detect it uh, using the uh, SEM detector. So that's the reason uh, the Sovj electron detectors are different. It will be very similar to what we do in the XPS process. Okay. So that we are not going to discuss in this course. Again, uh, uh, this depending on the L, L, uh, energy loss, depending on the energy loss, we talk there is a electron energy loss spectroscopy. so that we do use in tem because in uh, the last this electron uh, in a t scm so if you have, if you have this bulk sample so this is actually your incident electron uh, after knocking up let's say after knocking up you cannot actually detect it means because you have a bulk sample once it goes inside it will lose its all kinetic energy uh, 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 before it is coming out even if you have a very small samples also it may lose all kinetic energy that means it will absorb somewhere in the form of heat inside a material so you cannot actually get a electron energy loss means the electron which lost some amount of energy which you cannot you, uh, use it in a scm for to get a useful information about a chemical analysis but suppose your sample in tem is actually very very thin then this electron can come out so that is the reason uh you can use electron energy loss spectroscopy only in the tm okay, fine um 
one more point uh, which we uh, discussed here is uh, we have a uh, depending on the from which region that uh, uh, let's say if it is outer cell electron you lose some energy then if it is inner cell electron you lose energy depending on the different cells you have a different energy loss so this particular concept that we do use it in the x-ray photo electron spectroscopy that we will discuss in detail in the last part okay uh, the backstrator electron we get it uh, that backstrator electron if you have a detector for imaging then you, you say we say B, bsc mode of uh, backstrator electron image we can get but same electron uh, if you have a detector which is actually for a diffraction based detector then we get a EBSD analysis, electron backcutter diffraction. So this EBSD part, uh, it's useful for an analysis of structure of material. So that is the reason I'm not going to touch this structure part now because uh, structure, let us complete the structure part from the students and my, my uh, uh, lectures also. Once we do that, we'll go to the ABSD part. At this point of time, I'll cover the secondary electron, backscatter electron, and X ray, or I can say EDS. These are the part that I'm going to cover uh, in a SCM initially. Later on, I will uh, we will talk about the diffraction part once we complete the um, uh, structure and the X ray diffraction. Because once you understand X ray diffraction. It is easy for you to understand EBSD. You, you can understand electron diffraction. You can also understand the neutron diffraction. Some of the principles are very common. So this is what we are going to do. Now let us uh, take the secondary electron. As I told you earlier, the electron can knock off. Let's say this is our your incoming electron. This is your incoming electron. This can knock off this electron. This can knock off this electron also, okay. But in general, uh, as you said, we, we discussed earlier, these electrons are going to have a very large energy. So when you have large energy, see, um, we talk about work function. What is work function? One thing is that knocking of the electron is a process, one. Another thing is this electron should actually that means you are, you have incident electron. Now this is knocking of the one of the sample electron. We know that it cannot easily come out. Uh, once you had it has sufficient energy, only it can come out. Provided even it has to overcome that overcome the uh, 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 because the once you have electron which is coming out, this will become positively charged. That you have to, again, uh, it has to overcome that particular uh, uh, potential also. So, so this electron, whatever is there, so only the uh, inner cell electron may have a sufficient energy to overcome uh, from the sample. So that is the reason whenever we talk about the secondary electron, if you have, this is your incident electron, which is actually coming from the electron gun. So it has a probability of knocking off outer cell electron. So you have a probability of, let's say you have, let's say you have three cells. You have one, two, three. In each cell you have electron. So it can knock off this one. It can knock off this electron. It can knock off this electron. But if you knock off this electron, but this electron doesn't have sufficient kinetic energy to come out from, let's say, suppose you, you knock off the three from here. So it may not have sufficient energy to come out from the sample. If you knock off two, it can move a little bit further. But if you knock off the inner cell electron, it has sufficient energy, it can come out. Okay. So that is actually we, we, we talk about like uh, if it is an incoming electron, which is knock off, knocking off your one of the inner cell electron, which is coming out from the sample. If you can detect this electrons, using certain detector. You count it based on the number, you can get a some kind of image. We will discuss in detail. Okay. 
uh, maybe let me just explain to you so that number so that you can visualize it much 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 better okay now what is happening is this is my electron gun now what is going to happen is let's say that this is your fixed size let's say the uh, so this electron uh, gun can go and it can have a beam diameter like this is for a visualizing i'm saying that this is your beam diameter okay okay now it happened what it is done is it is actually uh, taken a uh, some amount of let's say that now you are here this is your sample now you are here this is a region of interest let us talk about it now you are here it has electron in, you have a incoming electron now it is hitting uh, it is interacting with your sample some number of secondary electrons are actually coming out okay now okay now you have this electron which is coming out let's say that from this particular location i am getting a 356 electrons okay now we have a detector what we did is it was initially the electron now we made the number of electron which is coming from this region okay that you give a certain certain color let's say that it is forming a gray 356 is forming gray okay now we we'll go to another region okay now i am going to another region this is actually scanning in this particular region now again now what is happening is this is 280 8 electron so 280 electron means this will be in general uh, in in sia uh whichever the region uh from where you get a more number of electron you say more number of electron that will be bright okay this is how image contrast we get the lower the number the electron it will be dark we i'll explain why all this concept uh, low electron uh, high number of electrons and all the thing but just to visualize it now okay now compared to this particular region so now we have is this region is only 288 electron now you can see compared to these two region this is slightly darker because this is this region i got 356 electron this region i got 288 electron okay now take it go to the next region so this region if i am getting a lower number of electron let's say i am getting around 150 electron so that means this is going to be darker you do this process continuously so let's say that from this region you are getting a 500 electron so depending on the number of electron what we are getting that is going to give you the contrast so different region if you hit this region you get some number of electron if you hit this region you get some number of if you reach this region you get some number of electron so depending on that particular region how many electrons that you are getting that is going to give me highest one is going to give me the brightest the lowest one is going to give me the it is going to be the contrast just a dark so this is how we get an image we will see how it is connected with your morphology little bit later okay now again let me go back to this particular slide so now we know that uh, what is happening is you are removing some of the innermost cell electron which is coming out from the sample and you have a detector now you are counting the amount how many electrons are coming out from that particular region based on that you are actually getting the you are actually getting the uh, uh, uh you are getting the uh microstructure okay um so there are two secondary electron one we call ac1 another one is ac2 so what is the difference between ac1 and ac2 is in ac2 if you look at here so this is your incoming electron now in this case it is not knocking off 
it is not knocking off any of the electron in this particular atom let's say this atom one but because of this nucleus small change see if it is changing like this then it will become bsc backscatter electron okay now what is happening is this is actually uh, bending a little bit okay now again it is going to another atom two okay but again what is happening is uh, it is not knocking off any of this electron in the atom two uh, but still there is a slight uh, change in the direction and it goes through a yeah, atom three but it is not actually again uh, not actually um, uh, knocking off any electron but now let's say that you come while coming back what is happening is uh, this is knocking off one of the secondary one of the inner cell electron so this electron uh, this will go as a backscatter electron so this will go to the detector as a secondary electron okay so what is happening is the secondary electrons that are generated by the backscatter electron that have returned to the surface after several several inelastic scattering events this is what in us it means you are not losing energy you are just only changing the direction because what is happening here is i i am not actually interacting with any of the electron it is only changing the direction uh, direction means i have an inelastic scattering one again it is going through inelastic scattering uh, it's basically a uh, okay uh, yeah in elastic scattering uh, it can be elastic scattering also this is actually a little bit loose term it can be elastic plus inelastic elastic inelastic means it can actually uh, knock off some of the outer cell electron but it can have sufficient energy to go through this process okay so that's where when it while coming out because if it knocks up somewhere here let's say that you knocks up uh, suppose you have an atom here you have a nucleus and you have an atom here if it knocks up but it may not have sufficient energy let's say though this this electron and this electron from the same cell uh, but we know that uh, to travel a path means it has to travel certain distance you have a lot of obstacle for this movement so this electron may not come out of the sample that's what actually we talk about the work function okay so the the, the electrons which are actually uh, near to the sample that is the reason if you look at that interaction volume so first is oj electron then you have a second electron because these electrons are not going to have a sufficient energy we'll also see the energy spread of this one this electron doesn't have sufficient energy so it it cannot let's say even uh, uh, the uh, the secondary electron can form here also but that may not have sufficient energy to uh, uh, to come out of the sample and reach the detector so that is the reason actually uh, we are not considering the um, uh, the event what is happening here we are not considering only we are talking about the uh, the, the this particular secondary electron uh, uh, which is coming out from the sample which is near the sample only that we are considering so this will actually give you the secondary electron um this secondary electron which is coming through a several elastic plus inelastic scattering event of from the backscatter electron we call it as sc2 so the problem is if you suppose, suppose you you talk about the resolution spatial resolution okay spatial resolution is something that we talk about this way this is from the top if you look at from the uh, from the side view spatial resolution see you talk about uh, spatial resolution here in a secondary electron ac1 is it is limited to the beam diameter suppose this is your beam, beam diameter then ac can come only in this particular region but secondary electron 2 it can actually deviate that means it can come from a something like this if, if it is uh, let's say this is your beam diameter this is actually your sc let's say this is your sc1 
it can be like this. So this is your SC2. So, so this is your secondary electron one and this is secondary electron two. It's something like this. So now you are having the, this is your fixture. This is for a small one and this you are going to have this. This is SC1. It's like pen and this is actually like a marker. Okay. So the AC2 come from a surface area that is bigger than the spot from the incoming electron. The resolution is poorer than AC1 alone. Okay, this is something which is very important uh, uh, to understand what is secondary electron one and secondary electron two. Uh, if you have only secondary electron one, you will get a much, much better image because we know that this beam diameter, the crossovers are very, very important to get a higher resolution. Suppose if we can actually filter it, there are ways of doing it, but I'm not going to discuss about it because it's not very common in all the instrument, but it is actually possible. Okay. Now let us see. So this image, which is taken where you have both AC1 plus AC2. Same sample by applying certain filter, you can actually remove this particular AC2. Then you can see the image. It is SC1 alone. So you can get a much, much better uh, resolution for a same sample, same voltage, everything is same. What you did is only you remove that secondary electron two. You have only the secondary electron one. It's basically, uh, that can be done. Uh, uh, I don't know what the machine, what we have, whether it is possible or not, I'm not sure, but I have done it this part. Uh, this is possible to do in some of the machine where you can actually say that SC2 you want to reduce it means remove it, it is possible. Okay, so this is what second electron one and second electron two. Okay, if you have any questions, you can ask me and I'll continue the other part also. Maybe any questions? Okay, let me complete it. Uh, uh, one more thing so that you'll get an idea. Okay, the image part second electron. Okay, now, in generally, if you look at a sample, so what you have seen is uh, uh, the number of electron is higher, you get bright. Okay, fine. Now I have a sample which has peaks and valleys. Okay. Now let's say that this is my sample surface. Okay. Now you have an incoming electron. Let's say that you have an incoming electron which is coming and hitting. Okay, this region. Okay, now let me look at here. So this region, because of this, let's say now let us take here, this region, uh, all the uh, second electron which is coming out from this region is actually escaping the everything everything is escaping the sample let's say now how many we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all the ten which actually all sc second electron which is formed because of this um, uh, interaction between the electron and the sample it has created a second 10, let's say the same 10 second electron it formed, all the 10 came out. Now you have a detector, you can actually quantify it. Let's say that now you have 10. Here, which is in the valley, same number, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's say 10. Now, out of this, only two are coming out. So now, the incident beam is same, your sample is same. This is also going to reach the detector. Now you have two. Here we are getting four. Now you can make a contrast. So how does this this part looks like in a in an electron microscope? Means if you take an image, how does it looks like? Because you have ten here. How does it look like uh, 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 in the electron microscopic image? Brighter or darker? Brighter. Brighter because the number brighter. of yeah it's a brighter compared to if you compare let's say you compare from one region to another you cannot take some other sample in some other region okay from that region adjacent what do you get is basically if, if you get a uh, more let's say you get five hundred you get more so same way what is happening here is so what is happening here is i am we are getting a more number of electron which is coming out from that particular region so you get you look it looks brighter but this is from the valley where you are getting from only two electron which is which means though it is formed 10 electron second electron form but only which is two is coming out here 10 form but only four is coming out so the probabilitically uh, uh, the probability is higher when you have the sample is in peak So that is the reason these are peaks. So the peak is something. These are the peaks. You see, you can see these peaks are actually bright. Because of that, you get large number of you get large number of electrons. That is the reason you see the peaks are actually bright. Okay. So these are the valleys. Dark. Because it's a low number of secondary electrons, so that is what that this is actually the one of the important uh, uh, um, imaging mode in the SEM. It's a very simple mode. If you use secondary electron, that will give you the morphology. So this is the basic mode. So whatever you see in the morphology in your uh, microscope, it's coming because of this fundamental contrast mechanism. Now you look at this image. So this is dark because this is a pit. Because the electron, it is like this. If you look at side view, it will be like this. So from this surface, you get a lot of electrons. So from here, you don't see this actually getting trapped here. So it may not come out. So that way, this region is brighter relatively compared to this region. This is actually dark because you start seeing the lower number of electrons which is coming out. particular region so this is the basic contrast mechanism what we have in the secondary electron mode okay if you have any question you can ask me any questions that you have so i'll stop here then we'll continue the next part in the next class okay. any questions no question so in the contrast mechanism uh, what type of secondary electrons are used means batch scattered or uh, uh, sc1 or sc2 in that brighter See, and darker no no whatever now we are talking about we are talking about contrast mechanism only for a secondary electron the contrast mechanism for bsc is different okay but we are talking combinedly sc1 plus sc2 whenever you talk about second electron it is combination of sc1 and sc2 the contrast mechanism for sc1 and sc2 are same so the only difference is sc1 and sc2 is actually sc2 is coming from the broader region so they you have a poor resolution the mechanism wise it is more or less same so then this mechanism is applicable only for a second electron not for a backscatter electron that we will discuss Okay, the backscatter electron image may not look similar. May not, may be looking similar or may not be looking similar. In general, it may not look similar. Okay. So the mechanism what I am discussing is only meant for secondary electron, not for a backscatter electron or any other any other mode of imaging in the SCM. So we also have 
we also have inlands and we have so many different uh, variants of this okay um so it is about only secondary electron so i'm not discriminating sc1 and sc2 because sc1 and sc2 is it's only a filter so i'm i'm actually taking 